This is a CMOS inverter symbol that we created in the previous video. I will put the link in the description. If you want, you can check that. If you right click here, you can access the symbol uh, and also the schematic. Let's run it. So far, we have understand the general shape of the voltage transfer characteristic curves. In this video, let's go to in more details and see how this step happening. The transitions or steps, as you can notice here, can be controlled by the characteristics and the relative strengths of PMOS and CMOS inverter. Now let us assume that both PMOS and NMOS inverter have the same strains. In this case, both input and output voltage will be the same and is equal to VDD over 2. So let us change the weight of NMOS inverter to X, the same as PMOS inverter, and also give 65 mu for KP. Similarly for NMOS. Now both PMOS and NMOS inverters have the same strains. So we will get a symmetric curve in which V in equal to V out. Now if we run the circuit, all the curves going through the center. We are input and output voltage is the same and is equal to VDD over 2. This is because the ratio of beta P and beta N is the same. We put it the weight of both PMOS and NMOS equal to variable X. So the weight of both PMOS and NMOS change equally. And the other parameters are also the same. Therefore, we got a symmetric curve. So now think about the case when the threshold voltage of PMOS and NMOS are not equal. Let's change the threshold voltage of PMOS from minus 1.22 to minus 2. In that case, you can actually see that the voltage transfer curve shifts to the left. And in this case, the middle voltage is not equal to VDD over 2 and is smaller than VDD over 2. And why is that? Because when we are doing the analysis, we know that when the input voltage is between VDD minus 2 volt, which is the threshold voltage of P-type MOSFET, 3 volt to 5 volt, the P-MOSFET will be off and the output voltage will be equal to 0. In this case, the NMOS is stronger than PMOS and the ratio of beta P over beta N is less than 1. Similarly, when increasing the threshold voltage of NMOS give the threshold voltage of PMOS equal to minus 1.22 volt and increase the threshold voltage of NMOS to 2 volt in that case, we will see that the curve shifts to the right. It is because when the input voltage is smaller than the threshold voltage of the end MOSFET and the output voltage will be equal to VDD. For example, here, when the input voltage is smaller than 2 volt, the end MOSFET will be off and the output voltage is equal to VDD till this point. So in this case, PMOS is stronger than NMOS and the ratio of beta P over beta N is greater than 1. So these are the important properties of the voltage transfer curve and we have to consider this carefully. So now let's consider the case when changing the weight of one of these transistors and keep the other strains the same. Let's give the weight of PMOS transistor a constant value, 30 mu. But the weight of NMOS transistor is equal to a variable X that changed from 1 mu to 50 mu. 
with an increment of 10 mu. Let us also change the threshold voltage of this transistor to 1.22 volt. Click OK. Now run the circuit. As you can notice, we have different steps for voltage transfer curve. And in this case, the symmetric curve is step 4. It is counted from here because the weight of N MOS is variable and P MOS is constant. But if the weight of P MOS could be variable, then we must count it from this side. To get only step 4, right click on the waveforms, from view, go to select steps, and from here, select step 4, click OK. Now you got the symmetric curve with respect to VDD over 2, or 2.5 volt. We are input voltage is equal to output voltage. As long as the input voltage is between 0 and the threshold voltage 1.22 volt, the output voltage is VDD. And at this point, as long as the input voltage is between VDD minus the threshold voltage of P MOSFET, which is equal to 5 minus 1.22, equal to 3.78 volt, and VDD which is 5 volt, the output voltage is equal to 0. It is very interesting when the input voltage is greater than 0, somewhere between 0 and threshold voltage, the output voltage is still VDD, which corresponds to a logic level 1. Similarly, when input voltage is VDD, or for some reason, it is less than VDD, the output voltage will be zero, which corresponds to a logic level zero. So the reason that why it works like this is because there might be some unwanted noises in the circuit. And the effect of the fluctuation of the input voltage can be nullified by the inverter action to a certain extent. And noise margin is a measure of this extent. To get a deeper understanding, let's put a cursor at this point and the next cursor at this point. The slope at these two points are equal to minus 1. The input voltage at this point is VIL and the output voltage is VOH. At the next point, the input voltage is VIH and the output voltage is VOL. So from this curve, we can say that a much larger variation at the input corresponds to a smaller variation at the output voltage. In another words, when input voltage is less than VIL, output voltage is above VOH, uh, corresponds to a logic level one. So when input voltage is between VIH and VDD, output voltage is between 0 and VOL, corresponds to logic level 0. So the noise margin tells us that any signal which is logic 1 with finite noise add to it is still recognized as logic 1 and not logic 0. And the noise margins could be defined as NML noise margin law equal to VIL minus VOL. Anything at this region is recognized as logic zero. NMH noise margin high equal to VOH minus VIH. And anything at this region recognized as logic one. These are all the basic information about CMOS inverter. I hope the video could be useful for you. Thanks for watching.